Hi, I'm Greg from RV Haulers. Would you like to see us load a Jeep on this RV hauler? If so, join us in this video. And I've got a little bit of a secret. There's something you maybe haven't thought about loading on the back of an RV hauler. And we're gonna show that to you in this video as well. Join us. Oh yeah, if you've joined me for any of our earlier videos, you've probably seen a lot of these. You've seen smart cars. Maybe you've seen a Fiat being loaded. Maybe you've seen one of the shorter Volkswagen Golfs. We can load a lot of different vehicles on our RV haulers, but a lot of people these days are asking for Jeeps. Let me turn the camera around and show you what we're gonna do today. The only vehicle that can be loaded width-wise on the RV hauler is the smart car. It's the only thing that fits. We can fit motorcycles, we can fit golf carts, we can fit some ATVs, but when it comes to four-wheeled kind of highway vehicles, the smart car is the answer. But why don't we make the RV hauler just a little bit longer and load a Jeep or something else I'm gonna show you in a little bit here. We're gonna to get to the loading right away. I'm gonna start with the fun stuff. If you're interested, I'm gonna talk about some of the numbers and details and some of the minutiae, the little things, that go into designing these RV haulers. So I will talk to you about the realities of length and width and what we can take and weights as well. So I'll leave that to the end of the video, but let's get right into the fun stuff. Here we go. We've got Spencer behind the wheel and he's going to show us how pretty easy it is to drive these up ramps. What's nice about these Jeeps, of course, is they've got so much low-end torque, even a four-wheel drive low, they just crawl up these ramps under a nice controlled environment. So those ramps that you see on the back of the RV hauler, we've engineered those for up to a 6,000-pound vehicle. Of course, a Jeep is nowhere near that, or the other vehicle I'm going to show you loading today. Those ramps are stored underneath the bed. There's a pass-through in the, one of those rear storage compartments where the ramps are stored. And the other nice thing about this brand new ramp design is they're separable. One of the complaints I had earlier with those ramps was that they're quite heavy. You might have seen the ones that were hinged in the middle and folded out. These ones come apart. They're over-engineered and they come apart in four pieces and they're a little bit lighter. I'm going to put a link to that ramp stuff down below in the comments. We'll be able to look at that separately in another video. But for now, let's just show you Spencer driving up the ramps. You'll see he's leaning out the window and all he has to do is watch that front tire. Because of course the other three are going to follow. So Spencer reports, of course, it's just idling up. He didn't even have to give throttle or nothing like that, feather the clutch, it just drives up those ramps nicely. We've engineered this particular bed to accommodate, actually what's gonna be loaded on this one for our customer, Ron, is a Honda side-by-side -side ATV. So it's actually not a Jeep bed, but it's the length we needed to demonstrate to you guys what a bed would look like if you put a Jeep up there. Remember, at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about weights and lengths and stuff, so we'll talk about that later. But when it gets up there, of course, you will have a very flexible chalk system. Again, I got a video on that if you'd like to look at that separately. I'll put a link down below. But for now, we've engineered this so that you can still have your fifth wheel trailer attached at the back. You can still turn, and even in the sharpest of turns, even a 90 degree uh, jackknife, that trailer will not come around and strike the rear of the vehicle. That's my job, is if you got something a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, I will make the bed the appropriate length. And as you can see, we're unapologetically long. Yeah, if you wanna take your toys with you, I'll build you a big bed. If you want to keep the length shorter, keep things the rig a little bit more nimble, we'll put a smart car up there. Let's drive off the Jeep and then let's show you the interesting alternative. So pretty straightforward to load, pretty straightforward to tie down. It's a very rapid chalk tie down system. Again, you can look at that separately. And back and down, all you have to do is watch that wheel 
go down the outside edge of the ramp. Now the reason I'm going to show you something a little bit different is Jeeps are awesome, right? They've been around a long time. They absolutely have a cool factor. They are the ultimate off-road vehicle. So if you're looking to go full timing and you want something that's not only going to get groceries for you and take four passengers or even five, the Jeep is great. It's also the two-door Jeeps are fairly short, right? They're, this in one in particular is 12 feet 6 inches long including the wheel that sticks out the back. However, Jeeps are not the most comfortable thing to drive all day, every day. So what Rob is going to bring in here is an alternative, something you might not have thought about. So in 2020, Ford introduced the EcoSport. This thing is 13 feet long. It is, this is the Titanium Edition. <laughs> leather, sunroof, all the electronics, and it's all-wheel drive. Actually, the intelligent all-wheel drive system in these Ford EcoSports is impressive. So if you were looking for something that's not only going to be, take, be able to take you off-road and go 4x4, and let's put some little bit knobbly tires on that guy, what it also has is beautiful electronics, amazing creature comforts, Great fuel economy, it's quiet, it doesn't leak air through every single corner like the Jeep does. It's really comfortable. And let's load this one now. So for power and control, this Ford is amazing. Lots of clearance over that ET hitch, not a chance of rubbing. Looks pretty good up there too, doesn't it? Have you found this interesting? If you have, if you would like to see other videos that we're making here at RV Haulers, or if you'd like to hear about some of the other rigs that we're building, hey, what we got in the background here, that is a brand new Kenworth 2022. This is 2022. That's a brand new Kenworth T680. You can see the bed is ready to be installed on that one. Hey, there's a Mac in behind there. There's a Peterbilt. Uh, let's turn the camera around. We've got RV hauler named Iggy, Smokey, and even some ones that you haven't seen yet. There's Ruby sitting in the background. If you're curious about what we're building at RV haulers, hey, why don't you subscribe? If you found this interesting, maybe give me a thumbs up. I, you really help me when you give me a thumbs up, when you subscribe, maybe hit that little bell and you will get a notification when we start to produce some more videos here in the next short while. Okay, just a really cool nugget that Rob wanted to share with you. Uh, there's Amy, Rob and Spencer who helped me out here at RV Haulers on a daily basis. Hey, this has a backup camera. <laughs> Rob was even mentioning as he's backing it down the ramps, you know how it shows you those lines in the camera? It shows you exactly where the ramps are. Reduces a lot of stress. Okay, let's get into some of the details. Some of you might be wondering how long this RV hauler is. Tip to tail, we are 35 feet. 
Of course, the pin point of, or, or the pin location for where the hitch is attached is 33 and a half feet from the front of the uh, RV hauler. So this is a Volvo model 730. This is the longest of sleeper models. We've also got a really nice deer guard or moose bumper we sometimes call them on the front so that adds about 10 inches so when it comes to length yeah if we're going to add a 14 foot jeep or something longer we're going to end up being long the front of the rv hauler the front bumper to the back of the cab is 16 feet you'll also notice on this one ron has chosen to go with the optional drum box that storage box that you see right there that's added 16 inches. So if you want to keep it a little bit shorter, we can forego the drum box and we can tuck the vehicle up into that little space. Spencer and Rob are putting the ramps in the umbilical storage so you can see how it passes all the way through. Slides in there really nice. And you can see too how it came apart into two pieces. So no longer are we having to lift both of them at the same time because they were attached with the hinge. They come apart in two parts, plus they're stronger. On the topic of weights, that rear axle is designed to take 20,000 pounds pushing downward on it. They call it the sprung weight. So one of the things we have to be cautious about is that we don't overload that rear axle. What's nice is, uh, you may have seen earlier in the video, the example of my personal fifth wheel. This is a New Horizons. This is 42 feet long. This one happens to have a 6,000 pound pin weight. When you do the math, when we add up putting a Jeep up on the back of the RV hauler, when we put a heavy, heavy pin weight, even 6,000 pounds, when we put all of our worldly possessions into some of those storage boxes on the back of the bed, I still have between 1,000 to 2,000 pounds of cargo carrying capacity. We do not need two axles back there. I've got lots of information I would love to share with you as to why we single these trucks. It's not necessary. You could leave two axles back there. There's some advantages to a single, but there's also some disadvantages. And the big one, a big disadvantage of a single rear axle is we can only take 20,000 pounds. Something else we did custom for Ron's RV hauler is we went with the three hitch solutions. So not only do we have the air ride cushioning fifth wheel hitch, we also have a high capacity gooseneck, which you can see behind it. And we've also got a three inch receiver for pulling a bumper pull. Hey, there's kind of a cool option I'll point out to you here on this RV hauler. Ron really likes the idea of the exhaust stack sticking up. And sometimes what we'll do is we'll put that down and route it underneath the bed. We call it a weed burner. Oh, there goes the Fiat. That's a cool car to load in an RV hauler as well. Awesome sports car, sunroof, super powerful, does seat four. It's a little bit shorter, it's just over 11 feet. Back to the exhaust stack. What Ron had us do at RV haulers this time is we made that drum box just a little bit narrower so that we could leave the factory exhaust stack sticking up beside it, just for looks. At RV haulers, I, not one, not every customer is unique. Every customer is different. And everyone has different travel plans and storage needs and toys that they want to take with them. I will make your RV hauler the way you want it. So instead of having just one design for beds and that's it, I will make it the length that you require. I'll make the storage to suit your needs. I will even change things like the, the appearance of the bed, whether you want skirted sides or not. All of that is possible here at RV haulers. What would you like in your RV hauler? I got a question for you. What you interested in? What would you like to see? Let me know in the comments down below. I really invite you to do so, so that I can make future RV hauler videos for you that are of interest to you. Oh, ah, the tried and true smart car. There it goes. That one's actually a Canadian one that's a diesel. 
I've got so much to show you that we've done on this RV hauler. I'll try to keep the video short. We've even got our new flux capacitor installed in here. Okay, it's not really the flux capacitor. This is our brand new North American, Canadian made, brand new Canadian made RV hauler can board. So this load center does all kinds of great things for this truck. Not only does it do the basics of converting the commercial wiring standard to the RV wiring standard, it has switched power supplies, you can hook up commercial lights still with this unit, troubleshoot the system, it's North American made, so this is really high quality, and I've designed this just for my RV haulers. I'll have a video about that too. But there is the flux capacitor. Don't worry, we didn't forget the cab cam camera system, so I'll take you for a little quick tour inside the cab and show you how we flush mounted that camera system right into the dash to make it look like factory. I agonize over the small stuff. The little things are what make the difference. And taking that little bit of extra time for fit and finish and to make things look as nice as possible resonates with us. We take that extra time. Let me show you inside the cab. That camera system, I don't know if you noticed, it wasn't there when we were loading. That's on a 90 pound welder's magnet. So that thing actually can be removed. It can look at the gooseneck hitch. It can look at the bumper pull hitch and we can take it and tuck it away when we're loading a vehicle up and down. Or maybe if you forget, don't worry, that thing can be knocked down, it's loose. Although it's pretty strong on that 90 pound magnet. Here we are inside of Ron's Volvo 730. There's the camera monitoring solution installed right in the dash. We still have the plastic on it. I'll let Ron take that off. <clears throat> but that is where the camera's mounted. And if we swing up, I'm going to show you some of the other things we did in this RV hauler. We have installed the TST tire pressure monitoring system. That comes on switched with the ignition, CB radio, and lots of power outlets for running your GPS, your dash cam, and of course, charging cell phones. If you're ever on the road and you see one of these rigs, and if you're curious if it's one of mine, always look for the tow kick, rvhaulers.ca. When you see that, you know it's one that I've agonized over. They have a name for a reason. They're like our little babies, right? We spend time with them. We build them custom to our clients' needs and then we have to wave goodbye. Anyways, this one's pretty well ready for Ron. We've got a few little touch-ups and things we want to do, but we're looking forward to having Ron join us, get some training, get some orientation to his new RV hauler, and he's going to be taking his home. But we deliver too. So the Peterbilt is being delivered. The Mac, named Stubbs, is being delivered. That's going to Illinois. The brand new Kenworth. I could go on. We deliver and some of our customers choose to come here to RV haulers and pick them up. We train right here in the yard. We're only 15 minutes from the international airport. We'll pick you up. Warning, warning. You are going to have to join us for some Canadian barbecue. We'll let you, you can vote on whether you think it's as good as maybe some Texas or others, but warning, you're going to be hosted. A couple other things we've got ready for Ron that I'll show you now is there on top of the deck, that's the aluminum decking. Ron himself has chosen to install it. When he gets his Honda, he's got some oversized tires, some unique things, so he's gonna lay it out and attach that himself. himself. We've got brand new chocks. They're all wrapped up. I don't wanna get them all dirty, so I'll bring out one that is already finished. These are meticulously sandblasted and powder coated with black carbon. Uh, powder coat so they really stand up well and of course everything we built here at RV haulers is over engineered if you want to watch that video on the loading remember that's down below on this attachment system here at RV haulers I don't it's not like a buffet where you gotta you know get upcharged for every single little thing I include everything you need so that you can load your vehicle on this RV hauler I don't charge you extra for ramps I don't charge you extra for chocks. I don't charge you extra for the proper engineered and tag straps. It's all included. Let me also show you, oh, Spencer, would you show us? Um, one of the other things that Ron really wanted is he wanted a light control system 
We've got a couple of flood LEDs that we mounted up in between the fairings and the drum box, and he wanted to have it from a switch that he can control from the ground. There's nothing worse than maybe you're in a dark campground in the middle of the night and you need to be able to illuminate where you're backing up, or you've got something going on at night, you need to check a fitting on the side of the fifth wheel, and you have no light. So this way, you don't need your keys, you don't have to unlock the truck, it's controlled from the ground level and controls two LEDs on the outside of the RV hauler. I'll take you up next and show you the Strombox. Everybody's unique. Everybody has different needs. And something that Ron wanted is he wanted some nighttime illumination on the inside of his drum box. So protected, tucked up in behind this lip is outdoor, high quality, boogie lights, um, LEDs. And they go all the way around, even across the floor. And they're controlled from a switch that Spencer has lovingly installed. So it's kind of hard to see, you know, in the daytime here, but those things light up the inside of the drum box like nobody's business. Always available to you when you are trying to gain access to your beloved possessions at nighttime. Something else Ron wanted is uh, one of the primary things we always do now is all of our drum boxes are powder coated. So sandblasted to bare metal, primed properly, baked, and then we do high quality powder coating. Then in this case, this drum box was al also received paint matched to the truck. So we are able to do the outside. Something else, uh, else Ron requested was additionally applying bed liner. So this is the rubberized coating that you'd normally see in a truck bed. The insides of the doors, all the shelving, all the back walls are all rubberized so that things can slide around in there and they're not gonna do any damage or create any scratching. Do you want one? I'm Greg from RV Haulers. I'm the guy that answers the phone. I'm the guy that will help you design, take the time with you to design your perfect RV hauler to meet your mission profile. We're the guys and gal that build your RV hauler for you. Yes, yeah, there's the scratches and the scars and the dirty fingers. We all work on these and we take our time. And I'm the guy that's gonna train you on how to use your RV hauler at the end. I'm Greg from RV Haulers. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Man, you're tough. How much have you heard my voice today? If you'd like to hear my voice more, I'm going to bring up on the screen some more videos that you might want to take a look at. Here you go. I'm Greg from RV Haulers. Thanks for watching and please drive safe.